We want to begin, though, with that record breaker in Victoria, suffering its worst day since the start of the pandemic. Two deaths and 317 new cases recorded in the highest daily increase anywhere in the country. Two weeks into lockdown 2.0 and the numbers are only getting worse. Our death toll's been doubling every four days, a rate of increase that's right now the worst in the world. Victoria's second coronavirus wave shows no signs of flattening with a record daily surge. I'm sad to report this is the highest number of deaths in a single day. 725 new cases set a new daily record. And the Victorian Premier says we're to blame. I think that each of us knows someone who has not been following the rules. And a Nine News investigation reveals critical failures in contact tracing. Nine News can reveal tonight the Australian Defence Force had 100 personnel ready to police returning travellers, but were told by the Victoria Government on six occasions they were not needed. The availability of ADF resources is not something that I can speak to. But yesterday the Premier did. I don't believe ADF support was on offer. An ADF support has been provided in very limited circumstances. But Nine News understands 100 troops were ready for each state, including Victoria, to ensure compliance in quarantine hotels. Ali, this is now all out war over who is responsible. Defence records showing that 100 troops were put on standby in Victoria to help with hotel quarantine on the day the program was established. But the very the next day, Victoria Police reported back to the ADF that they were well advanced in planning and did not need military assistance. Now, why this debate over ADF and helping out at hotel quarantine is so vital is because Victoria's decision to go with private security guards instead of the military is being blamed for Victoria's catastrophic second wave and why Melbourne is currently in stage four lockdown. Seven News has been told the way security was handled at some hotels was a disaster waiting to happen. So serious are the allegations of mismanagement and misconduct, a judge will determine what went wrong. I can't specifically recall. I'm not certain that I had received any specific advice, Ms Elliard. I can't specifically recall whether I, not that I specifically recall. I have given this quite some thought, Ms Elliard. I'm not certain why I mentioned police, private security and our health team. Those three groups of people and not a fourth or a fifth group on your on the specifics I, I can't I can't clarify for you or outline for you why I chose those three groups. But I have I have tried to search my recall of this and I, I simply can't I can't provide you with detail as to why they're mentioned and others aren't. So it's five hundred pages this final report into the botched hotel quarantine program and interestingly it's failed to determine who commissioned that critical uh, decision to use private security. Over 70,000 documents being tendered at this inquiry. She could not determine who or which agency made that critical, ill-fated decision, uh, a decision made without any lines of responsibility. So while we were expecting heads to roll, it seems potentially that now won't happen as a result of this inquiry. Families whose loved ones died in the second wave, they have spoken out as well. They say the Premier has blood on his hands. There are calls for him to resign this morning. He's refusing to do so. Those calls are only growing. Is a thank you.